Okay. Um, so this is going to be a review for some of you. For others, it's completely new. But the real number system is just a way of categorizing numbers, and we can give them special names so that we have better math vocabulary when we're talking about equations and expressions and stuff. So the real number system is broken up into two large groups. You have your rational numbers, which have multiple subsets, and your irrational numbers, which are completely on their own. Our irrational numbers are pi and square roots of non-perfect squares. They're non-terminating, which means they never end, and non-repeating decimals, so they have no pattern. The ones you need to know are pi and square roots of non-perfect squares. On occasion, in some of the activities we do, you might see a decimal with a dot, dot, dot at the end. That means it's irrational because it's non-terminating, non-repeating. But um, that's like not an official notation. So for life, you need to know pi is irrational. You need to know any time you take the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, you get an irrational number. Um, some people think of them as the crazy numbers because they have no pattern. They never end. Um, for our rational numbers, I like to work on the inside and, and work our way out. So natural numbers are just counting numbers. We naturally learn to start counting at 1. You never start counting at 0. You never start counting with negative. So our counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. It keeps on going up forever and ever. When we add 0 to our natural numbers, we get our whole numbers. I remember that because of this O in whole is like a 0, so they are natural numbers plus 0. <coughs> so they go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up. When we add in the negative numbers, we get our integers, but not all negative numbers are integers, just the opposite of whole numbers. So our integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So you have all of the whole numbers, which are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up. But then you also have those negative numbers. A lot of people get confused and they think that all negative numbers are whole numbers. But this is a negative 3.52. That negative number is not an integer because it has a decimal here. But like negative 4.00, that's really just negative 4. That's an integer. So not all negative numbers are integers, just the negative whole numbers are integers. And our rational numbers are our nice numbers. They have this word ratio in it. When you learn about ratios, 2 to 3, you could also write as the fraction 2 thirds. So our rational number is anything that can be put in the form of a fraction. So that's fractions, terminating decimals, and repeating decimals. If you have a fraction like 5 sevenths in your calculator, you get the decimal 0 .714285. 714, and then it continues 285. So that does repeat. Um, even this, this is 
two sevenths that I just wrote out. Two eight five seven one four. Two eight and then there's a six. And people look at that and they say, okay, now there's a six that's not going to repeat. But if you look at where this five is, there's a seven next to it, which means this five gets rounded to a six in your decimal. So two sevens is two, eight, five, seven, one, four. Two, eight, five, seven, one, four. But the calculator rounds for you. So anytime you see a fraction, do not put that in your calculator and try and decide if it's rational because all fractions are rational. It's in the word. Ratio means fractions. All fractions are rational. Don't put them in your calculator. Okay? Here you go to the next page. All right, this is just sums and products of rational and irrational numbers. It's going to be a lot of words, but basically, if any part of your problem is irrational, then your answer will be irrational. So, these are two fractions. What kind of numbers are these fractions? Rational or irrational? Rational. So the first one's rational. We'll write an R for rational. The second one's rational. If I multiply them together, I get two-fifths as my answer. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 5 is 15, that simplifies to 2 fifths. That fraction is a rational number. So the product of two rational numbers will always be rational. The next one has pi in it, so 7 is a whole number or a natural number, which is rational. Pi is an irrational number, so we're going to use i for irrational. Um, when we multiply these together in our calculator, we get 21.9911485. This is an irrational product. So the product, which means when we multiply something together of a non-zero rational and irrational number, it will always be irrational. We have to put this non-zero part in because zero times pi is zero, which is rational. So it has to be non-zero. But since part of our answer is irrational, our whole answer will end up being irrational. Um, pi is irrational. 3 is rational. The sum is 6.1415 something. Nine. 159. Okay. But anyway, we have pi in here. We're just adding 3 to it. That's still going to be an irrational. So the sum, when we add two numbers together, if one of them is irrational, the answer will be irrational. And just like multiplying, when we add two rational numbers together, so repeating decimals are rational. Remember that because they both start with the letter R. Repeating decimals are rational. The second number, terminating decimals, rational. It's a nice number. The sum is 3.68. Five, six, and that part repeats. Repeating decimals, even though it's only the end part that's repeating, is also rational. So when we add two rational numbers together, no matter what those rational numbers are, the sum will always be rational.
And down at the bottom, we'll just do this together. We can shout out rational or irrational. Two fractions added together. Rational. Um, two square roots added together. Irrational. 15 times 0.3% or 0.3%. Rational. These are both rational numbers. And 2 pi times 9? Irrational. irrational. So when they have part of it that's irrational, the answer will be irrational. There is an exception when we're multiplying um, square roots. So like the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5. So that's why with um, multiplication, it's only one part that has to be irrational. Sometimes, if there are two irrational numbers, you can get a, a rational number to end. But you won't see anything like this. This is just like an FYI. So sometimes you can have two parts. But as, if only one part is irrational, the answer will be irrational. Okay, put those off to the side.